Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. How you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. How yeah, are you? I'm I'm great. This is an episode of Car Stereo Lab, but his car's not in here yet because we're going to talk about something before we get to the lab. That's what we like to do. The whole purpose of bringing the car in is so whatever we've talked about, we can put in and show you guys how it goes. Today's a little bit different though because we're having to update the lab. Yes. Times are changing, and we're getting more and more things that we need to test in the lab. Right. And we need to move things through quicker. Some days we're testing DSPs, other days we're testing amplifiers. We got a bunch of amplifiers we got coming up that we need to get in there and test. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having to unscrew the existing amplifiers and screw new ones in, and it would have been really smart if when we first designed it, we would have had more than two outputs, like three outputs, but they only had a four. Either way, mm -hmm. it was like, eh, but then something changed. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So join me at the bench as we talk about the new Stinger X line. So this is the new Stinger X Link Ultimate Wiring Kit. Now inside of this box is something that I need to get out that we're gonna put in the lab, which means we can open this up and talk all about it. The new Stinger X line is a whole new line of RCAs, like this one here. Ooh, look at that. Oh man, copper, they're so sexy. And also some sound treatment, which we just used in the Toyota Tacoma we did when we put in the new MX series speakers. Let's go ahead and open this up and show you what comes inside and why it's the ultimate wiring kit. Now right off the bat, you have 17 feet of 18 gauge remote turn on. Now they have red power wire in this. Now what makes Stinger kits a little bit nicer than all the other kits is they give you 18 feet of power wire. Most kits are 17, this is 18. And let me tell you, that extra foot sometimes is a lifesaver. Now they've gone ahead and covered the engine bay side of the wiring with the Tech Flex wire insulation, we call it leaving. They show you here where you can cut in and put the fuse holder. That way this is a maximum distance. You can put it anywhere you want in here. If you want to cut these off, you can. Now it also comes with three feet of ground wire here with a ring terminal already on one end. But wait, there's another piece of ground wire here. There's a second piece of three foot ground wire right here. Now what this is used for is they're giving you a piece for the amplifier so that you can ground the amplifier properly. And also a second piece here so that you can ground your factory back. Battery. That's right. Who would have thought? A lot of the times cars have inferior grounding. They're giving you a piece of wire so you can ground it better. That way you have no excuse. Now on the bottom, you also find a bunch of zip ties and then the goodies in this bag. Let's go through this because this bag here, it's got a lot of goodies. Now right off the bat, you find three four gauge wire ferrules. There's one 18 gauge wire ferrule for the remote turn on. There's a grommet for your firewall, a ring terminal. In the packaging, there's a second ground terminal. It comes with a red sleeve over it and then they also give you a silver sleeve. There's three pieces of four gauge heat shrink for your ferrules. There's two pieces of smaller heat shrink for your ferrule for your 18 gauge. There's one blue butt connector. If your amplifier has a fork terminal, they do give you a fork terminal and a cover for the remote turn on. If you have this little guy right here that we'll talk more about in a minute, we're just gonna set this guy right over here. And then you have six screws. For grounding, they give you an Earl terminal. And what this is used for is to get maximum amount of grounding. So you can get a nice big area and screw this guy down. You get a lot of contact with this. And then lastly, the reason why we have this kit and want to talk about it is this fuse holder. And that's what this guy's for. Let's go ahead and get the top off of this. Now you notice right around the ends there's covers. You can un pull these out. We'll just set these aside. We don't want to lose those yet. So inside it is a 175 amp mini ANL fuse. But you'll notice these two bolts right here on the outside, these guys here. The reason why they're here is because you could actually use a full size ANL fuse in there if you'd like. So now if you're somewhere and let's say your little guy here blows and you can't find another one of these and they have these you could switch out to this size here or vice versa if you have one of these and you know what I'm saying that's cool in itself but there's more to this fuse holder and why it's called the link and then also why it comes with these little plugs now if you look on the side of the fuse holder here you'll see this groove right here and on the back side, there's another groove also right here what that groove is for is you can take another one of these and snap it in a place like that you could take another one of these and snap it in a place like that. And like that. Because you can buy just these fuse holders by themselves under the, the Link brand. 
And on the back here, they talk more about the fuse holders and what makes this fuse holder so cool. These fuse holders will take a zero gauge, a four gauge, or an eight gauge. That's what they're showing here. Inside are two sleeves for the size wire you're gonna be using. So we'll go ahead and pull one of those out and show you what they look like. This is the spacer here to go to an eight gauge. If you remove it, now you can put a four gauge in here. And if you keep going, you can pull that one out and you can put a zero gauge in here now. So these are designed to go together like this. So now you have one fuse holder that'll work every size power wire you have. Now when you buy them by themselves, inside the box you see these yellow things here that looks oddly familiar like this guy. These aren't fuses, what these are are links. And it says it right here on the back, warning, this is not a fuse. They apparently even have really small printers because it says the same on this one. Now in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna link six of these together just like this. And that's where these guys come into play. Now the reason why we want six of these is because we want three for power and three for ground. Two and two for the existing amplifiers that are already in there, and then these extras are gonna be for the amplifiers we plan on adding for testing. Now this opens a whole new possibility as far as how you're going to distribute power infusing in the back of your car. The reason why they give you these is if you just wanna use it as straight distribution with no fusing, you can use this. If you do wanna fuse it in the back, you can use these or these. Now they do give you a bunch of examples on the sheet that comes with it and we'll kind of go over a few of them here. The reason why these were in there is so that you can cap off ends that aren't going to be used for wiring. Ends that are going to be used for wiring you can easily remove the cap. Now we've gone ahead and mocked up a power side and a ground side so we can start building out what we were wanting to do. Now we'll go ahead and put our fuse here to give us an idea. All right so if we put a fuse here we'll pull that out and just set it right there. We know this is going to be ground so it's going to need one of these. Now if we want these three outputs here to be ground then we can just take our mini jumpers here and set them like this then when we put the bus bar back in now these three outputs are going to be ground we can connect our three ground wires off to here and go off to the amplifiers the same can be true for the fuse side if we put the two jumper bars there and put our fuse in here now these three outputs are fused from this fuse here now if we needed this to be fused as well we could put a jumper bar back into here with a jumper underneath this like that and then take and put a second fuse here, so now that these two would be fused. So there's a lot of different options you can do just by moving these around along with these as well as fusing. Now, if you're not wanting to do any fusing in the back at all, simply install a bus bar here and a bus bar here, and now you have a distribution for power and for ground. This is what we're gonna be going for in our application. And then you can pull these rubber ends off of here and connect all your wiring up on that side. Now, these yellow are yellow because they want it to be a warning, meaning these aren't fuses. If they were black, they'd kind of look like a fuse and they didn't want to have you make that mistake. We're not going to leave them yellow because, well, it's ours. So we have our cool five star red heat shrink. But any red heat shrink would work. Now we have a power side and we have a ground side. Then we'll go ahead and do the same with these little guys here. And this will allow us to build this out so visually it's what we're looking for to put in the car. And then when we're done, of course, there's covers. Now what's nice about the covers, if you notice, they have these grooves in them right here and right here. And those grooves are for these bus bars to clear them. So these will just snap over like this. And of course, they all go the same direction. So what we'll end up with is this nice stinger fuse cover. And you know, all we'll have to do is pull off the two that we want when we want to change out and add in our amplifiers, we'll be able to see power and ground. So we're gonna go ahead and get some shrink wrap all on these, get them all finished, and I'll meet you guys over in the car and we'll get this thing wired in. So we got the shrink wrap over them and we've gone ahead and put it into the lab. Now, if this is the first time you guys are ever catching a lab video, basically what we've done is we've built a test bench in the back of Fernando's car. It allows us to put DSPs, amplifiers, everything that we talked about at the beginning of the video. There's some permanently mounted ACM audio control amplifiers in here. There's bus bars for inputs and outputs outputs from the radio. And now we have a bus bar system set up for power and ground. Before we just had four gauge in and it split off to two eight gauge and it was like, that yeah, was cool. This is much better. Let's take a look at it. So now we have all six set up. 
we have our positives on the top and the negatives on the bottom. Now this took us a couple minutes to figure out exactly how we wanted to arrange these because there again, you could put fuses, you can put bus bars, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. So our little jumpers are here and there and then we put our bus bars as far apart from one another as we could. Now we've also lined it up so that this is gonna be our test ground and this is gonna be our test positive. And the reason why we did that is because the screws are here. So as we're unscrewing them, which we found out, if you're too close to this nub here, you could arc it. So we didn't. We wanted to make sure that the one we're gonna be taking in and out all the time wasn't gonna be anywhere near it. So now this rests over a positive and this rests over the negative. We can pull in and out the eight gauge or four gauge if we need to, and we're all set. There's a lot of options you can do with this, which makes it really neat. And this is what's gonna work for us. One of the cool things I think about these fuse holders is that what configuration is gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. And even you, when you were sitting there like, I got this, because yeah. I, I had to go next door, and I came back over, and I go, what, what, did, what did you just do there? Yeah. And you're like, I did this, and I, I go. Was struggling over here. Because I had a vision, he didn't see it. <laughs> no, that was so fast. I was like, <laughs> yeah, just do this, I'm gone. Oh, All right. Let me put the covers. So you can see the final Ooh. one. Yeah, get the covers. Hang on. All right, guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, you know where you find us, Facebook, Instagram, and here in YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Lab. Stay tuned for more cool stuff that we get to test. Bye.